Hey guys, good evening to you all. Happy Saturday. I pray that you guys have had a wonderful day today. Uh, me personally, I have had an outstanding day from start to finish. It has been busy. It has been filled with loads and tons of fun, but it has just been really, um, it's just been really nice. I'm getting a little bit tired right now because I just took some medicine because my allergies all of a sudden wanted to be kicking in and giving me a fit and but I was determined to get this message out to you guys uh because it was just in my spirit all day um to tell you guys what God spoke to me and what he showed me um it just made me so happy it made my heart so merry and it was just absolutely no way I could I couldn't share this one this evening okay um, so when I woke up from my dream last night, it was such a detailed dream, but it was one of those dreams that was all over the place. I really didn't know what to do with this. So I laid in the bed for a minute and I was like, God, I really don't want to write that down because it's all over the place. <laughs> and, um, I understood what the dream meant because I love the dreams, um, where the Lord already tells you what it's about while you're dreaming it. I can get with those dreams because I don't have to go praying and figuring it out because he's already showed me. Um, but so, yeah, so he told me there are actually three different messages from one dream. I was like, okay, great. So I got a little bit to work with. I understand what's going on. And then he told me he wanted me to start from the ending of the dream uh, to go to the beginning where it started, where it starts from. But first go from the ending to the beginning. So I don't know uh, how I'll bring these messages to you guys. I just know right now the part that I'm starting with is the last part of the dream. Um, and when I do the other dreams, you'll know that what dreams they go with or with what messages that they go with, because I'll let you guys know ahead of time, because oftentimes the Lord will give me all of these dreams and I can't always deliver them all right away. Sometimes I'm sitting on dreams, I'm sitting on messages and all kinds of stuff. Um, and I'm moving at the speed or the pace that he wants me to move um, uh, as it relates to the dreams that he gives me or the messages that he gives me to give to you guys, okay? But these ones here, I'm hearing him say these are going to come out pretty quick. So you may get one uh, some hours from now that's attached to this particular message, all right? But if that's the case, you'll know because I'll have it in the description box that this goes with another message and then you'll already know that this is attached to that message that I did. Okay. Alrighty. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, I just wanted to tell you guys that <sighs> having a relationship with God is the most important thing that any of us will ever do in this entire life. Um, he is the most, I, I just, I don't even know if words can describe what I feel for our Lord and Savior. I don't even know that I have the words. And I, I always have words, but it's just like sometimes I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed at how far I've come in this relationship with him. And I believe that this is the best relationship. This is the most important relationship uh, that I'll ever have with any person would be with Jesus Christ. And I know that after him, it would be whoever I marry. And I know my kids are in there. There'll be the, the biggest relationships in my life. Okay. Will be my children and who I marry. Um, I, I just can't like with everything that the Lord was showing me, it's just like, I don't know. He's just amazing to me. He's just amazing to me. And I'm going to try my best not to really get um, emotional. But um, what I saw was just absolutely wonderful. So let's get into this. Let me go ahead and share this with you guys. It's a very short part of the dream. It's the very ending of the dream. Uh I, it does tie in together and I see exactly how, but it's just amazing. Um, so there are all these clouds. There are all these clouds and I see Jesus sitting on this throne. And by the way, it's thundering and lightning um, 
I love it when it's thundering and lightning. I absolutely love it. So if you hear it, that's what's going on right now. It's thundering, lightning, and raining. Um, so there's all of these clouds there. And there's Jesus sitting on a throne. And he's sitting on a throne with all of his white on. And then he has on this gold crown on his head. And he's looking at me. And I'm looking at him. And I'm dressed in all of my white. And I'm looking all beautiful and whatnot. And... He starts to point around and for me to, you know, look around. So I'm looking around and I see all of these gifts and they're all packaged very nicely. I mean, the wrapping is very nice. The ribbons are very nice. Everything is just so beautiful. And then this is really huge gift that I could barely look over it because it was so big. I mean, it's like, I don't even know how to describe this gift. It was just that big. It was that big. Like you, I don't know what in the world was in this box. It was just so big. It was bigger than me and Jesus. That's how big this gift was. And he said, all of this is yours. And then when he looked at me, he had the smile on his face, like doggone it, girl, you did it. <laughs> Doggone it, girl, you did it. And then he said, because of your faith and because of how you didn't give up and because of how you pat you bypassed everything that was going on, the way you did it, the way you did it, the way you succeeded because you believed in me and because you had faith in me, because you, your faith was not in man, it was in me. Because of that, that's how you were able to win. And he just looked at me and was like, dog, want it, girl, you did it. <laughs> and the face is like, you know how when someone wins something or like you have a child or you have a spouse or you have, you have a favorite team or somebody accomplished something or they win something and maybe perhaps there was maybe a bit of little, I wonder if they can really do this. I wonder if they can really do this. And then when they do it, it's a shock like, wow, you actually really did it. And that was how he looked at me and how he was just speaking to me like, you really, you've done this. All of this is yours because of what you've done. And I just had a big smile on my face and I was just overcome with joy and happiness just from seeing him like, the way I looked, it was just like, I, I just, I almost like I didn't even have any words. It was just so amazing. And <laughs> listen, y'all, God told me when I woke up this morning that lots of us, lots of us, we, this wasn't easy. This has not been easy. Okay. Let's just be honest here. It hasn't been easy. Okay, a lot of us make it look easy. And it's not that we're being fake. Okay, um, some people don't understand where is this coming from. Though they say that they know Jesus, they don't really know him. Because if they did know him in this way, what we have, they would have as well. Do you feel what I'm saying? So we make things look easy that are actually really difficult. Okay, and the reason as to why it looks easy is because of the one that's walking with us. The one that's with us. If it was not for Jesus, we would not be able to overcome things. If it was not for Jesus, we would give up. If it was not for Jesus, we would just say it's better to be back in the world because it was a lot easier in the world. Because that's what the devil would want us to believe. That it was easier in the world. It was easier. Okay, but the truth of the matter, it wasn't easier. Okay, and a lot of us, you know... Because of this relationship that we have with God, we have that supernatural strength uh, and endurance and we have that drive, you know, and that push to keep going. And there's a lot of people who do not have that. There's a lot of people who do not have that because they're not really sincerely locked into God the way that they need to in order to have that working for them. Okay. And, you know. What can I say? God is just proud of a lot of you guys. He's a proud of us. He's very proud of us because we have overcome things that have killed other people. 
Okay, and I'm just I'm not just talking about like a natural death. I'm talking about even a spiritual death. Things where people just couldn't take it. And because we have overcome and we have uh done all these things and beat all these things that were thrown at us, we have you know, done what was impossible for other people. We have actually done it. We have these things that God has for us. Okay. We have these gifts. We have these things that he's going to bless us with. Okay. And man may try to hold those things back from us because they feel as if they can't control us. And if they can't control us, they feel that what they have, you know, uh, they won't give it to us. That's not what God is talking about. The things that God is talking about is not the man, the stuff that man has. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Because anytime that God wants to get a blessing to you, he's going to get it to you. It doesn't matter. It just really doesn't matter what type of ugly demon rises up to block you, stop you and tell you what he's not going to do. God's going to do what he's going to do. He's going to bypass all that stuff. I guess some of these people think God is like a I don't know who they think he is. I, it just baffles my mind that people have this imagination that they're more powerful than God and like God can't strip them. Just, I'm going to say how I'm hearing it, strip them butt naked of everything, you know, and put them back in the, in the dirt where we're all going. Okay. They act as if God doesn't have the power to do that. And it's so weird to me, but listen, that's neither here nor there. We have some things to celebrate. Okay. This is message is for you guys who have been faithful to God, you have endured like a good soldier. You have not given up. You may have even had days when you cry. You may have even had days when you might've asked God why. You may have even had days when you ask God how long, but you're hanging in there. Okay, you still believe him for everything that he said. And he said, because of that, everything that he said, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Make no doubt about it. There's no mistake in it. You're going to get it. Oh, I feel the Holy Spirit. I feel the Holy Spirit. So I can't even move past it, guys. I can't even, like today when I was with the children, you know, all day we're praying. We're like, y'all guys know I'm a praying woman. And my children know I will pray at a drop of a dime. It don't matter where we're at. If we're driving down the street, I'm praying, and then I'm just like, okay, we're going to be off the devices. We're going to be praying, 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 and boom, I start speaking in tongues, and I lost it. I'm driving down the street like a crazy woman. I know the people driving next to me on the interstate was like, Lord, what is going on with that woman in that car? I was having a fit. The tears were coming. I just was like in a place of like, oh my gosh, I love you. I love you. Like, you're the best person in my life. <sighs> He is the best friend, the best person in my life, guys, you know, and nobody can take that space. And that's how it really should be. It should be that way for everybody. Nobody should be able to take that space that God has with you in your life. Nobody, um, not a mother, not a father, not a child, not a sibling, um, not a husband, not a wife, not a cousin. Nobody should take that space. That's, that's like reserved for God. That's a special place. You know, all the extra love is beautiful, but nobody should be able to take or get in that space that you have with God. That's private. That's personal. That's something you have with him. Okay. And it's beautiful. I mean, we are his creation and we were created to worship him. We were created to bring him glory. We were created to lift up his name. We were created to show the world who he is and all of these wonderful things. And let me just say, the Lord said to me that he is about to bless the socks off a lot of us. Okay. He's about to bless our socks right off. So let me get into the scripture um, that the Lord gave me to read. I don't know how far in this I'm going to go because it's pretty lengthy, but we'll see. Isaiah 49, and I'm reading from the Amplified Version, okay? Listen to me, O islands and coastlands, and pay attention, you peoples from afar away. Whew, the Lord has called me from the womb, from the body of my mother he has named me. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword, and the shadow of his hand he has kept me hidden. And he has made me a sharpened arrow. In his quiver, he has hidden me. 
And the Lord said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will show my glory. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing, in vanity, pride, uselessness. However, my justice is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now says the Lord who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord and my God is my strength. He says, it is too trivial a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will also make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. This is what the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, Israel's Holy One says, to one thoroughly despised one, to the one hated by the nation, to the servant of rulers, kings will see and arise. Princes shall also bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says. In a favorable time, I have answered you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. And I will keep watch over you and give you for a covenant of the people to restore the land from its present state of ruin into a portion and give as inheritance the deserted her hereditary lands, saying to those who are bound and captured, go forth and to those who are in spiritual darkness, show yourselves come into the light of the Savior. They will feed along the roads on which they travel and their pastures will be on all the bare heights. They will not hunger or thirst nor will the scorching heat or sun strike them down for he who has compassion on them will lead them and he will guide them to springs of water. And I will make all my mountains a roadway and my highways will be raised. In fact, these will come from far away and lo, these shall come from the north and from the west and these from the land of Aswan southern egypt shout for joy o heavens and rejoice o earth and break forth into singing o mountains for the lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted now you guys can go go on and read the rest of it no he's telling me to go all right thank you holy spirit but zion jerusalem in captivity said the lord has abandoned me and my Lord has forgotten me. The Lord answered, can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. Indeed, I have inscribed a picture of you on the palms of my hands. Your city walls, Zion, are continually before me. Your builders hurry. Your destroyers and devastators will go away from you. Lift up your eyes and look around at the returning exiles. All these gather together and they come to you to rebuild you. As I live, declares the Lord, you Zion will indeed clothe yourself with all of them as jewels and tie them on as a bride. For your ruins and desolate places in your land, once the scene of destruction, certain certainly now in the coming years will be too cramped, for the inhabitants and those who once engulfed you will be far away. The children of your bereavement, those born in captivity will yet say in your ears, the place is too cramped for me. Make room for me that I may live here. Then Zion, you will say in your heart, who has borne me these children since I have bereaved of my children and am barren in exile and a wanderer. And who has rested, who has reared these? Indeed, I was left alone from where there did these children come. 
This is what the Lord God says. Listen carefully. I will lift up my hand to the Gentile nations and set up my banner to the peoples and they will bring your sons in the fold of their garments and your daughters will be carried on their shoulders. Kings will be your attendants and their princesses, your nurses. They will bow down to you with their faces to the earth and lick the dust of your feet. And you shall know with an understanding based on personal experience that I am the Lord for they shall not be put to shame who wait and hope expectantly for me. Now I'm going to stop there. Read on from 24 guys all the way to the end of 26. That was in. I mean, I could have gone on. There was a, only a few more, but you guys can read from 24 to 26 where it ends. Okay. So basically the Lord wants you guys to know that he is watching you guys and he is rooting for you guys. All of heaven is rooting for you guys. And when they see that you are winning, they are overjoyed. They are ecstatic. They are leaping. They are running. They're just like, oh my gosh. Like when someone's about to win a, 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 win a race or something, when they're running track and they're about to win first place, their faces are like, come on, come on. Come. Or like when you're about to pass the baton to another runner, that's how they're looking. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You got this. You got this. This is how heaven is rooting for you guys. And the Lord has said that there are these presents that are beyond what you can even think of that are so huge. You couldn't even think to do these things for yourself, but God is going to do these things for you because of your faithfulness. He's going to give you even more than you requested and even more than what he said he was going to originally give you because you have endured so much. And you have done it with such grace and, and the way you have just shown people, other people, how it's done. Because of that, the Lord is going to bless you with more. Okay, because the way you're showing people how it's done, they've not done it. They've not done it, but you are like their, their, their uh, blueprint. They're following you. And what you guys are doing, it's leading them into freedom. It's leading them, it's giving them, they're having uh, uh, eye openers and having some understanding of this thing. Okay, and starting to realize they really need to take the Bible and take it for what it, what it actually says and really live by that so they can go on and have uh, some of what the rest of us have. You understand what I'm saying? So guys, look, I'm just over the moon right now, like just to see my daddy smiling at me like that. And just to see him, <laughs> just to see him looking at me like, girl, you just, you shocked me. You just looking at me like, girl, you are out of the world. Like, girl, you are something else. Just amazing. Just amazing guys. So I'm getting ready to go on that note, guys. I pray that this has made someone else smile. Uh, you got to know, you got to know, guys, just because everything's getting hard around us doesn't mean that God is, God is not blessing. It doesn't mean that God's going to not bless us. OK, things may get rough for other people, but they're going to get better for us. OK, God is still going to bless us. He's not he's not going to tell you he's going to bless you and not bless you. OK, so I am getting ready to go on that note, guys. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel and I can't wait to bring the following uh, two messages that are attached to this one very soon. Okay. Take care. Bye.